Good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Noman on behalf of Advance, on <laughs> presenting you Advance Forex Techniques on behalf of USG Forex, the leading Forex provider in the Australia, one of the few regulator providers. So when you trade with USG, you can trade Forex commodities indices with a trusted Australian broker. They are regulated by the ASIC, the SC Australian Securities uh, Commission. Also, all funds are segregated into the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, so you know your funds are protected. Withdrawals are processed within 24 to 48 hours. You have ultra-fast execution speed on the platform. You have negative balance protection, and you also get a dedicated account manager. What more could you ask for? All we want to do is help you trade the best you can. You get up to 500 to 1 leverage. Very low slippage, very low spreads. You can trade 60 different currencies, indices, and commodities. And you get 24-hour-a-day support. When you trade with USG, you'll have access to trading signals from Trading Central. You'll be able to get uh, signals and contact other traders who Zulu trade. And you get to join the social trading platform from my FX book. So you have all types of support mechanisms there to help you trade better. USG has been an award-winning Australian provider for several years now and will continue to be so well into the future. They offer lots of services and different type platforms. So when you trade with USG, again, you can trade currencies and CFDs. They are the leading CFD provider in Australia. They are headquartered in Sydney and they are a global company with offices around the world. They offer 60 foreign exchange currency pairs alone. You can trade contracts for different CFDs on equities, indices, and commodities like gold, silver, and oil. And they've been in business for two, since 2006. That's pretty long when we're talking about the Forex industry that's only been around. It's still in its infancy on online retail trading. <clears throat> and last but least, don't forget you're trading with a regulated broker. Their license number is 302792, so you can always look them up on the Australian Securities Commission and make sure that you are trading with a regulated provider. <clears throat> you can trade with our MT4 or MT5 platform. You get all of our social trading tools. You get advanced risk management tools. You have our MetaTrader web uh, mobile trader. You get our online web trader, and you can also trade multi-terminal. You decide what you want, and you just tell USG, and they'll get you set up the correct way. You also get daily technical reviews. You get signals pushed directly through the platform. You get online technical live uh, technical research, and you get Forex TV, so you're on top of the news all of the time. Now, we also have our VIP club as well as our traders club, so we have all types of programs directly set up that you can take care of. Uh, somebody just wrote me that their voice is cutting in now. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing people like to do is put the blame on this side. But most of the time, the software we use and using Citrix GoToWebinar is pretty good. If you're having any problems, it is most likely your internet or your system. The most I can recommend to you is to log out and log back in again or refresh your system. Because otherwise, I would know if the whole community out there didn't have. But I can't individually help you. I'm sorry, and I'm not a techie guy. So that's the best I can suggest to you is if you're having any problems with the voice or just hang in there. A lot of times it's just your local internet. So we have a webinar promotion. If you open up your account with $5,000 capital, you'll get $500 extra deposit right in your account. You'll be upgraded in all of your services and you will be getting everything we've offered on the platform as a first time special offer. Now remember, I said today's class is being recorded. You can access it in about 24 hours uh, with the same link you've come to today's class. Now, let's talk about advanced trading technologies or, or techniques. Okay. The first thing is everybody starts to think out there, oh, I'm a newbie, I don't know how to do this. And within days, they think they've conquered the world and they're trading out there. And unfortunately, too many people end up losing their money. Because moving from a newbie to an advanced trader is a process. Imagine, you wouldn't expect a doctor to read a couple books and 
then say, ah, I w went to one or two uh, surgeries and watched them, and now I'm an excellent doctor. Would you let them cut into you? Would you let that dentist drill into your teeth? No. Because what do they need? They need to learn the basics. Then they need to learn how it all applies. And then they need to learn and have experience. And too many traders want to jump from instant Forex and instant novice to trading complicated advanced strategies without learning what is in between. Now, there are basic traders. You've all learned what basic Forex is. You learn how to understand what pips are, what spreads are. You've understood how what a currency pair is, how you're trading one cross currency or one currency against another. Okay. You understand all that. Okay. But now we have to learn the important stuff because this is what's going to make you a better trader. Learning a complex strategy is not going to help you because you'll still make the trade completely wrong. Now, Forex trading can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. In the beginning, Forex traders trades seem like it's very simple. It's only due to your lack of knowledge. It seems like your only job as a trader is to pick what direction a currency pair is going to go and collect your profits. Or maybe you're thinking that trying to find a 100% accurate Forex trading system on the internet, if only it were that simple. So before we can actually talk about advanced trading, we need to understand that controlling risk is the most important concept that any trader can master. Risk control is, the, is more important than any strategy, any system, or any other knowledge. You find that almost every successful trader spends more time concentrating on risk and order entries than they do on any type of strategy. Because strategies come and go. They work sometimes. They don't work sometimes. Okay. You can put them together by building your trading plan. But unless you can protect your risk, you can wipe out your account in one second. So remember, speculating as a trader is not gambling. The difference between gambling and speculating is risk management. In other words, with speculating, you have some kind of control over your risk. Whereas with gambling, you don't. Even a card game such as poker can be played with either the mindset of a gambler or with the mindset of a speculator, usually with totally different outcomes. Have you ever watched the world of poker? Have you ever watched these professional traders trading playing for a million dollars? I mean, yeah, they all have their little gimmicks. They all have their sunglasses or hats or bandanas. They all have their, their little image they're trying to create. But if you ever watch them, they are concentrating so hard because what they're doing is they're calculating and the odds, they're calculating the risk, they're calculating everything before they make a decision. And that moves them actually from a gambler to a specul from a spec uh, from a gambler to a speculator. Okay. Now, forex risk management can make the difference between your survival and sudden death with forex trading. Risk management is a combination of multiple ideas to control your trading risk. It can be limiting your trade lot size, hedging trading only during certain hours or days, or knowing when to take losses and leave the market. The first rule of risk management is to calculate the odds of either your trade being successful. This is your risk reward ratio. Okay, this is, I'm sorry, this is not your risk ratio reward. This is calculating what are the percentages of you making the correct decision. You need to understand the dynamics of the market in which you are trading. Also, you need to know where the psychological price trigger points are and which price chart will help you decide. Once the decision is made to take a trade, then the most important factor is how you control or manage your risk. And this is your profit reward ratio. Remember, if you can measure the risk, you can, for the most part, manage it. In stacking the odds in your favor, it's important to draw a line in the sand, which will be to cut out the point if the market trades to that level. The difference between this cutout point and where you enter the mar market is your risk. Psychologically, you must accept this risk up front, and this is crucially important. Okay. You have to understand that every trade carries risk. Not every trade is going to be a winner and need to know when you will exit the market or when you will remain in the market. Not start chasing a trade, not getting disappointed. Because no matter what strategy you've adopted, 
Hey, that might give you an entry point or an exit point. The market, because price action, there's no guarantee how price action would be. You know, who knows? Mario Draghi can get up on the on speech, make a speech right now that we're not expecting, send the euro in the opposite direction. Or Donald Trump can come up and say, tweet something that says the dollar in the wrong way. You need to protect yourself. If the loss will be too much for you to bear, then you must not take the trade or else you, mu you will be severely stressed. Now, the other side of the coin is since risk is the opposite side of reward, you should draw a second line in the sand, which is where if the market trades to that point, you will move your original cutout line to secure your position. Stop losses, trailing stop losses, moving up. There's all kinds of strategies about moving your stop losses up. If the market moves in your favor, some people will sell 50% of their investment, move their stop loss, and keep the rest riding. This is all part of risk management and money management and securing your profits. It is more important than all of these strategies that everybody wants to learn out there. The second line is the price at which you break even in the markets and you cut out at that point. Once you are protected by the break even stop, your risk has virtually been reduced to zero. As long as the market is very liquid and you know your trade will be executed that price, make sure you understand the difference between stop orders, limit orders, and market orders. And these are crucially important, and we're going to talk a great deal about these today because this is what advanced trading technology is about. It's understanding the different types of orders you can place. Too many people simply place market orders and don't realize they can place all different types of orders. When to get in the market, when to exit the market, you can put it all different types of orders. And this is much more important than a strategy. If you don't understand all the different ways of executing a trade, then you'll find that there are certain ways of executing a trade that make you profit. Do you realize you can set up a trade in advance, one above and one below the price because you're expecting an economic result, you're expecting it, and the system can automatically cancel one order when it executes the market surges, it'll take go up and execute your first trade and cancel your second trade. If the market goes down, it'll execute your short and close your up. All these kind of things, they're all different types of order entries that you can do that will help you make money. These are advanced strategies, not learning, oh, the MACD guy tells me if I do this, this, and this, and use this strategy, I can just close my eyes and, and make trades. Okay. Another aspect of risk is determining how much trading capital you have available and how much you're willing to risk per trade. Now, there's all kinds of strategies out there. Okay. There's something you'll hear a lot of, and that's Martingale, anti-Martingale. Okay. There are three basic ways to take a bet. Martingale, anti-Martingale, and speculative. Speculation comes from the Latin word speculare, meaning to spy out or look forward. Now, you'll hear a lot about Martingale. Martingale was actually developed for gambling, but a lot of people apply it in the Forex market. And it's a strategy about doubling up each bet every time you lose in the hopes that your losing streak will end and then you'll make enough profit on your winning trade to offset that. Using anti-Martingale strategy, you would have your bets each time you lost and would double your bets each time you won. The theory assumes that you can capitalize on the winning streak and profit accordingly. It also has to understand that you have enough money to stay in the markets, but to do that, <laughs> you still have to cover your risk management. Clearly, for online traders, this is a better, the better of two strategies to adopt, anti-Martingale. It is less risky to take your, your losses quickly and add or increase your trade size when you are winning. Okay. However, no trade should be taken without first stacking the odds in your favor. And this is not clearly possible, then no trade should be taken at all. So in other words, if you can't find a way to make your trade very favorable for you, don't trade it. Taking risk or guesses isn't a good thing. Now, the other thing we have to constantly worry about is called leverage. Okay. Now, beginning traders, they, oh, look at that. I've got $1,000 in my account, and I can go invest in $100,000 worth of euros. Well, they're gone from the, the markets in no time flat, and then they want to blame their brokers. It's not the broker's fault. Leverage is just something offered. It's, it's you know, do you blame your bank when they give you a credit card and you run it all the way up to the maximum level and you can't pay it? Not the bank's fault. So the next big risk magnifier is leverage. Leverage is the use of the bank or the broker's money rather than strict use of your own. The spot forex market is very lever a very leveraged market in that you could 
could put up a deposit of $1,000 to actually trade $100,000. This is 100 to 1 leverage. As one pip loss is 100 to 1 leverage, situation is equal to $10. So if you had 10 mini lots in the trade and you lost 50 pips, your loss would be $500, not 50. But one of the big benefits of trading spot forex is the availability of high leverage. This high leverage is available because the market is so liquid. Leverage, of course, cuts both ways. Now, any good, successful, advanced trader will, by this point, have built themselves a trading system or a trading plan. This does not just incorporate your strategies. It incorporates your risk management tools, your leverage, your time of day you're going to trade, how many trades you'll make a day, how you'll analyze the trades, how much money you'll invest per trade, and continue to do this. This is, this is the one step that will move you from a beginning trader over to an advanced trader. And then you'll master risk. Once you've mastered risk, then we can start looking at strategies. Because no matter what strategy you lose, you trade. There's no guarantee with a strategy it's going to be a winning trade. And if you wipe yourself out in one trade, well, hey, it's over and done with. But a strange strategy, but also important, is all about order entry. Traders can strategize all they want to come up with a great trading plan. But if they can't execute that plan effectively, all the hard work might be well thrown out the window. A trader has many tools at their disposal in order to trade the strategy of their choosing. These tools come in many different ways and many different orders that allow traders to enter and exit the markets at their convenience. Okay, so most of us do market orders. Very few out there, I guarantee you, know about limit orders. Few of you know about take profit orders. Some of you know about stop loss orders. Some may know about trailing stop orders. Your trading style would dictate the order type that best suits your needs. Now, if I can say that when the euro is trading at 119, if it hits 120, I want to execute a short. Well, you can stand at your computer all day staring at it and hope it's going to hit. Or did you realize you can enter an order ahead of time that tells the system that if the euro hits 120 to execute this order, where to put your stop loss, where to put your take profit, and it, the computer, so if it just pips up for a second, you get in there because you know it's going to stay below 119. And so you get in there at the maximum point. Do you know you could say if the euro goes up to 120, execute a buy, and if the euro falls to 118, uh, execute a sell, and if the euro falls to 118, execute a buy. Okay. So that's an OCL. If one cancels the other. Okay. You need to know these because this is how you'll make profit by being smart. Orders should be placed according to how you're going to trade. That is, how you intend to enter and exit the market. Improper order placement can skew your entry and exit points. Now, there are many different types of orders out there, and this is what you don't know. Most people don't know. This is just on the platform. You just have to click on the right, you know, the right boxes to get the right order. So the most popular are market orders, limit orders, and stop orders. So a market order needs to execute it right then and there when you click on it at the current market price. Limit order is you actually specify a current, a specific price. In other words, you don't want to enter the, the euro unless you can get it at 119.47. So when you actually, when you set that limit order, when the euro hits to 119.47, it gets executed. Stop order will execute at a current price after a specific price has been reached. So when you understand order entries, you can start using them as part of your trading. For instance, when a large market event is scheduled and you are not sure what it will do to a currency pair, you have order entry types that you can use. They will execute a trade if the market rallies or falls, and you can set up both and give the right order entry, and it will cancel one in the, the one in the wrong direction and execute the one in the right direction. And it doesn't cost you any money. You haven't made a trade. You're not in the market. You're just saying, okay, if the euro surges, okay. Now, so the basic kind is market order. This order type is often the first execution order that comes across, the traders come across. 
Just as the name implies, this is an order to execute at the markets and is immediate. This means that you want to enter the or exit the market instantly. You can use the market order to trade at the next available price. However, you might want to note that in a fast moving market where price can change in seconds, the price can be substantially different between the time order and the execution. As an example, let's imagine that the euro US dollar is currently trading at an asking price of 121.21 and has a bid price of 121.20. If you wanted instant access to the market, then you'd have a choice to either buy at 121.21 or sell at 121.20. The exit of position, on the other hand, you would be assuming that your long is sell the position back to the market at the best available price to cover the short. So the difference between the buy ask price is, is, is known as the spread, which is essentially the broker's commission. Okay. Then we have limit orders. Okay. Sell limit orders are always priced above the market, and buy limit orders are always priced below the market, because you wouldn't buy higher than the market is. Okay. A limit order is placed when you're only willing to enter a new position or exit a position at current at a current position at a specific price or better. The order will only be filled if the market trades at that price or better. A limit buy order is an instruction to buy the currency pair at the market price once the market reaches your specified price or lower. That price must be lower than the current market price. A limit sell order is an instruction to sell the currency pair at the market once the market reaches your specified price or higher. So in other words, what are you doing? You're, betting, you're getting better control over your type of trade. You're no longer limited to just trade now, trade in that direction, trade in this direction, trade that. Now. You know, you're now slowly sitting down and making your decision. You're not making your decision based on what, what's happening, bouncing up and down by a second. You've now evaluated on charts. You've decided, okay, this is the price I'm willing to enter the market, or this is the price I'm willing to, to sell into the market. And you just tell the computer, this is the price you want, and the computer will execute your trade when that price is reached. Limit orders are commonly used to enter a market when you fade breakouts. Uh, you fade a breakout when you don't expect the currency to break successfully past a resistance or support level. Now, when you come to our classes, and we're talking about retracements, recoveries, reversals, okay, and you want to say, well, Barry, how do I know exactly when to get in the market? How do I capture that? You capture it with a limit order because you've already determined what level that you expect that price to break to. And if it bounces off of that level, you're ready to go in. So you've now set it up way, well ahead of time. And when that happens, you've controlled the market. The market hasn't controlled you. So for example, suppose that, the, that based on your analysis of the market, you think that the Swissy cur current rally move is unlikely to break past the resistance successful. Therefore, you think that it would be a good op excuse me, opportunity to short uh, when the CFD rallies up to near that resistance. To take advantage of this theory, you can, you can place a limit sell order a few pips below that resistance level so that your short order will be filled when the market moves up to that specified price. Besides using limit orders to go short near a resistance level, you can also use orders to go long at a support level. Now, limit orders are used to set your profit objective. Before placing your trade, you should already have an idea of where you want to take profits should the trade go your way. A limit order allows you to exit the market at your preset profit objective. So imagine some place is called a take profit level. Now, if you said, I'm entering the euro at 118, and if it touches 120, I'm happy with that price. I want to get out of the market. Well, you could enter a sell order at 120 that will close your buy order. So you've locked in your profit the minute that objective is reached. So there's all combinations of buy stop orders, stop loss orders, and how the cycle goes around. And you can use these based on all types of trading strategies. Okay. You have to learn what they are. Now, we have a stop order which is what we were just talking about, is an order that becomes a market order only once a specified price is reached. You can be, it can be used to enter a new position or to exit a position. 
a buy stop order is an instruction to buy a currency pair at the market price once the market reaches your specified price or higher. That buy price needs to be higher than the current market price. A sell stop order is an instruction to sell that currency pair at the market price once the market reaches your specified price lower. Okay. So it's a stop order. It's you're already in the market. You're trying to protect your 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 loss your losses. So if the market goes against you, it automatically closes you out. Okay. And remember, when you're trading in currency pairs, you have to execute a buy order when you start or a sell order, and you have to execute the opposite to get out of the market. So that's why we're always talking about the buy and the sell. So imagine here we have on the chart. You put, you enter, you're, you've got a trade and you enter the trade here. Trade moves up and you enter your stop loss order at this level, okay, which is near you. When the, if that asset moves against you and falls, guess what? You got out of that order and did not suffer the entire loss. You avoided loss, okay? So a stop loss order is very important. Most people just refer to it as a stop loss. So if you have a long position, say the, the Swissy, you will want to take the pair to rise in value. In order to avoid the possibility of chalking up uncontrolled losses, you can place a stop sell order at a certain price so that your position will, autom will automatically be closed out when that price is reached. A short position will have a buy stop order instead. Then we have trailing stop orders. This is a little bit more complicated and much more important. Similar to a stop loss, a trailing stop can be used to restrict losses and avoid margin closeouts. A trailing stop resembles a stop loss in that it automatically closes the trade if the market moves in an unfavorable direction by a specified distance. The key feature of a trailing stop loss is that as long as the market price moves in a favorable direction, the trigger price automatically follows the market price at a specified distance. So in other words, if the euro was trading at 119 or 118, okay, and we bought it to go up, and we wanted to take a profit at 120, we knew that there's a swing of the market, and we thought we bought it near the bottom, but we didn't want to go below 117.5. That's too much of a loss. Now, we could put a stop loss at 117.5, okay, so the market fell, or we could put a trailing stop loss at 50, 50 points, and if the euro moved up from one. 18 where we bought it to 118.50, it would automatically move our stop loss up to 118. If the euro moved up to 118.50 to 118, uh, 118.75, it would move our stop loss up to 118.25. So the point is, we've always locked in our profits, and it keeps moving up. Then you can start employing other types of strategies. A lot of people who sell 50% of their holdings the minute they can move up their stop loss and take some profit, and that way they're really trading with the market's money. So a trailing stop loss is one of the most advanced techniques you can master. You'll find it will make you money. It's better than any strategy. Because the markets move up and down, up and down, up and down. You enter a market, it's still going to move up and down in peaks and valleys. If you have the right order set up, it doesn't matter. You can lose money even if the trade goes, you can make money even if you don't understand what the markets are doing. Okay. So stop losses can be used to protect your profits. Once your trade becomes profitable, you may shift your stop loss order into a profit, profitable direction so as to protect some of your profits. Okay, so stop orders. Buy at my stop price in the current market, rises that level. Sell on my stop price if it falls. Simply, a buy stop order is issued to buy at a price above the current market price. Sell stop order is used to sell at a price below. Okay, so entry orders are those that we also have entry orders. Entry orders are those to enter the market at a specified price. It's almost impossible to monitor the, monitor the market every second. And this is why an entry order can be handy. If you feel the market may be a certain action, such as a breakthrough, a price that has been touching but hasn't been able to break through yet, you would want to use a, a, an entry limit order. Entry order, limit order, same things. When the price crosses your entry limit order, you're in the market. That's plain and simple. So we can take these things one step farther by setting contingent stops and limit orders to manage our trades 
if our entry order is triggered while away. This gives us peace of mind that when we are floating a naked trade without managing orders attached to it, okay, to do this, click the advance button while placing an, an entry order, the option for setting a stop and a limit will be added. But that's the basics. We haven't even gotten to all of the other good stuff. Okay, and this is the stuff an advanced trader needs to master. Okay. We have good to cancel, GTC orders. We have good for the day, GFD orders, and one cancels the other. This is probably one of the most effective orders that you can use, but nobody uses it. It's used the least by retail online traders. It is a great order entry. It's a great execution strategy, and it's a great profit maker. So good to cancel is good to cancel is an order that you want to put in at a certain price. Now, for instance, we think the euro is going to surge, but we don't know exactly when it's going to do. We want to sell it when it surges. So you can put in a good to cancel to sell the euro whenever it hits 123. The probability of getting there is very unlikely, but all it takes is one positive day or one crazy thing that happens, and you you've executed your order because you've left it into G to C. That means it's going to stay open and not open. It's going to stay there scheduled until that price is reached. Well, if you think at 123, it's a great sell opportunity, or if you think the euros are trading at 118, you think you, no matter what happens, if it hits 116, I'm gonna buy. Okay, you don't care whether it's today, tomorrow, or the next day, guess what? You enter, you have to make sure you go to cancel them because you can leave them too, you know, too long and forget about them, that's another problem. And then GFD. GFD is, do you think something's going to happen today, or Mario Drake's going to make a speech, or something's going to happen, or Trump's going to do something? Okay. You can open up your order with a good for the day, which means you've expressly told the computer, if it doesn't reach whatever you've had by the end of the day, to automatically close your request to open the order. You haven't actually opened an order, but that means you, when you go to bed at night, or depending on where you are, that that, tray, that order, or that request to initiate that order, closes. So there's all types of unusual orders. We have day orders, good to cancel orders, good to day and days orders. You, you can ask, you can actually set up a day, a, a trade that you say is only leave this open for three days. If it doesn't fill this order in three days, get rid of it. Okay. Then we have fill or kill order. We have after market orders, pre-market orders. Okay. All of these are able to be executed. It's like going to Starbucks and offering a grande. I go to Starbucks and I offer my double latte, you know, with, with my hazelnut, and that's it. And then sometimes you have somebody who's ordering their double latte with soy milk with half foam, half steam, half this, two of that, three of that. Well, it's not much different in the marketplace. You can place virtually unlimited types of orders and combinations of orders. But one of my favorites is one cancels the other. It's a great way to trade. It's a great way to trade volume. You can have a whole strategy. It means that when you can set a price, let's say the price of the euro is at 120.40. You want to either buy the euro at 120.95 over the resistance level and anticipate a breakout or initiate selling if the price falls below 119.85. Okay. means you're not sure what it's going to do at that level, but you don't care. If it falls below that price, you'll do it. If it goes above that price. So an OCO order, you order both orders, and whichever one's executed, it kills the other one, gets rid of the other one, cancels the other one. So you don't have to worry about it. that It'll accidentally cancel both, and you'll have both orders going on. And then you have one triggers the other. An OTO order is the opposite of an OCO, as it only puts an order when the parent order is triggered. You set an OTO order when you want to set profit taking and stop loss levels ahead of time, even before you get in a trade. Did you know you could do that? Yep, you can. Okay. For example, the Swissy is currently trading at 120. You believe that once it hits 121, it will reverse and go downwards, but only up to 119. In order to catch the move while you're away, you set a limit order at 120 and at the same time place a related buy order at 119 and just in case place a stop loss at 121. As an OTO, both the buy limit and the stop loss will only be placed if your initial order at 120 gets triggered. So this is what advanced trading techniques are all about. Not all these complicated involve somebody developed this strategy and look for that and this and that. Yes, you need technical indicators. 
But if I gave you all that, and I told you right now the euro is going to go up, I guaranteed it. Well, you know the euro is going to go up. How do you know how to execute that order and capitalize on it most? Or the euro is going to go all the way up and crash all the way back down, and they go all the way. How do I capitalize on all of that movement? Now, there are many well-known advanced trading strategies. Hedging is one of the most talked about and most well-known. These are no longer order execution. These are basic strategies. Each one of these strategies are going to take you a lot of time and effort and, and education. Once you've mastered them, they're great to incorporate into your trading. But just reading about it for one day will not get you right. Okay? But hedging is one of the most well-known strategies out there. Hedging is a way to reduce risk by taking both sides of a trade at once. If your broker allows it, an easy way to exit hedge is just to initiate a long and a short position on the same pair. Advanced traders sometimes use two different pairs to make one hedge, but that can get very complicated. In other words, if you think the USD JPY is going to go up, but you think if it goes up, maybe the euro is going to be stronger, so you also want to trade the euro JPY to hedge your risk because it may be the dollar that's generating the profits or the Japanese yen or the euro. And so you can take two different but related currency pairs in opposite directions also. So you have to learn what they are because they're quite complicated. For example, say you decide that you want to go short on the Swiss franc because you see it sitting at the top of its recent price range. You decide to initiate your short. After setting up your short, you start thinking that the USD CHF, the Swissy, is looking a little strong, and you think, ah, it might break upward and make some sh make you short an expensive one. So to take advantage balance uh, balancing act, you start looking at other USD pairs. And for example, the Euro US dollar tends to move in inversely to the UR USD CHF. To complete your hedge, you would go short the Euro US dollar. The Euro US dollar ends up breaking resistance and moves strongly against the Swissy. So your short euro trade becomes the winner and your, your USD CHF trade is the loser. But your risk is limited because they are almost even out. Then we have position trading. Position trading is trading based on overall exposure to a currency pair. Your position is your average price for a currency pair. For example, you might make a short trade on the euro US dollar at 140 or 120. If the pair is ultimately trending lower, but happens to retrace up, and you take another short to say at 142, your average price would be 141. But once the euro does break below 141, you'll be back in profit overall. So there's lots of other trades, and you can see on my chart over here, there's a place position traders enter later that we see swing traders enter, and then another point we see momentum traders. So you would be entering the markets at different positions depending on the type of strategy and the type of trader you are. The scalping is another very popular trade. Scalping is making very short-term trades with a few pips, usually using high leverage. Scalping typically is done in conjunction with a news release or supportive technical conditions. The trade can last anywhere from a few seconds to a few hours. Many beginning forex traders start with scalping, but it does not take long to figure out how much you can lose if you do not have the right ideas. In general, sc scalping is a risky strategy that does not pay well in comparison to his risk. If you are going to make scalping trades, it is best to do them in conjunction with your overall trading position, not as your primarily, primary trading method. So to sum it up, advanced trading, forex trading, is about seeing all of your options when you make a trade. Aside from using masterful risk management and extreme caution, advanced trading can be an alternate way to make profit and control loss. Advanced trading techniques are used about are just are just about using the market behavior to your advantage. Learning to use advanced te techniques properly is what will give you the edge that will make you stand apart from the average trader. So mastering order execution and how to use them to make profit is a great way. You'd be surprised when you want to trade a volatile NFP report, you can turn that into an OCO and it will, you could, I mean, 
you can take trade or you know use a limit order on both sides of the, the market orders and you can take trades in volatility just go up and down you don't care what's causing us you see an asset is volatile you use the right trading the right trading executions you can capture all of that profit between the bounces up and down so on that note I'm going to say goodbye to everybody thank you oh, I just lost my PowerPoint here Give me a second. Let me get it to the end here where we were. Sorry about that. So to sum it all up, order execution is what advanced trading is all about. That's what moves you from the novice and the beginning. Because most novices and beginners use simply market orders. Once you can move past market orders and capture the market and capture it correctly, then you're on your way to success. I mean, imagine, it's less like, you know, your buddy goes and buys a new car and he tells you he got a great deal. He got that car, $12,500. You go to buy that same car and you get it for $12,250. $250 dollars better. Why? Not because you bought a better car, you bought the same car, you bought it from the same sales, because you executed a better order. Maybe you waited to the last day of the month and executed it. Whatever it is, it's taking advantage of all the things the market offers to find the, the most profit possible. And sometimes just simply knowing how to do things better, like I said, maybe going in at 11 o'clock on a Friday night got you a better deal. Okay, maybe wait until the last two hours before the month was over. Maybe coming in with cash in your pocket or a check written out. All of those are ways to execute that order at the best possible price and the best possible way for you. And this is what will take you from the amateur moving towards the professional. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for supporting USG. And if you want to learn more about us, go to www.usgfx.com and set up a demo account. You can try some of these order executions because now most of you don't even know anything about this. So you're going to all run back to your platform or go to a demo platform and try to learn how to set up these all these different types of order executions. So go back and have fun. Play on a demo account. See how they all work. Try to master them. Have a great trading day. Thank you for supporting us, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye now.